Now, one of the most common questions I get with people asking for my help with their puppies is that their puppies are driving them insane with the amount of nipping and biting that they're doing. And no matter what they try, they simply can't stop their puppies from nipping and biting. Or even worse, they thought it would kind of end itself once they come out of teething. And now they've got a one-year-old, 18-month-year-old Mastiff or Connie Corso or German Shepherd that still won't stop mouthing and biting. And it's starting to become a real problem. Now, also, one of the most common compliments I got from my Connie Corso puppy when people met her was how amazing she was at not biting and nipping at such a young age, even though she was teething. And they were really interested in how I got her to that stage so quickly. And in this video, I'm going to explain to you exactly how you can have a dog that doesn't nip, that doesn't mouth and doesn't bite. Now, first and foremost, I want to discuss one of the things that drives me mad about this new age commonplace methods of dog training and around the advice that a lot of positive only trainers give to people to help stop puppies from biting. And that is, and I want to make it clear, please do not do this. And if you do do this, you need to stop immediately, is that if your puppy nips or bites you for you to yelp, uh, act like they've hurt you and pretend that you're their litter mate and that they've hurt you, because that's how dogs would learn as part of their litter's bite inhibition and to not nip. I understand the methodology of people thinking this way and it is true that puppies do learn to interact with each other and what is appropriate nipping and biting and play through methods like this but it is totally terrible advice for your relationship with your dog. The most important thing I want you to understand from this video is that you are not your dog's litter mate, you are not its brother or sister, you need to be your dog's calm, consistent leader in all areas of its life. You are not a litter mate, you should not be acting like a litter mate, and you should definitely not be acting like a weak, hurt litter mate. It is a terrible idea and is gonna set you up for huge levels of much more severe behavioral problems down the line if your dog starts to interact and see you as a litter mate and sees you as a litter mate that they can so easily hurt. Now, I also want to nip in the bud right now that by no means the advice I'm going to give you around stopping nipping or biting is going to come from any form of dominance training or dominance theory. That's not what we're going to do. We're not going to be hurting our dogs under any form, uh, any circumstances. I do not agree with that. I completely disagree with it. But I am an advocate for balanced dog training where we use both all areas of operant conditioning, both reinforcement and punishment. And punishment doesn't mean hurting the dog. It simply means letting them know that they're doing a behavior that we don't like anymore and even more important than that we have to strip everything back and strip it down to the fact that we need to be our dog's leaders you hear me use the phrase all the time about being a calm and consistent leader and I use that phrase all the time because that is the essence of having a good well-mannered well-behaved dog if your dog does not see you as a calm and consistent leader it doesn't matter what kind of training you do and what level of obedience that you can bribe your dog to do with positive if only training, you will have a dog that will misbehave and will decide to ignore you should the bribe that you're offering them not be as interesting as the thing that they want to do. Now, if that thing that they want to do is biting and nipping, that might seem like an insignificant behavior. But if that behavior is caused by them not seeing you as their leader, those behaviors as they get older and as they move into adolescence and adulthood, it will be a disaster. So this is an opportunity for you to really really reinforce and re-embed and restructure your relationship with your dogs. Now the best example and analogy I can use for this is simply to watch how an older adult, well-rounded, well-mannered, well-behaved dog interacts with a puppy. If that puppy bites or nips them too hard, that adult dog will not yelp, roll onto their back, roll around and cry or ignore the dog. They will correct the behavior instantly and you will watch that beautiful ability that a dog, a well-behaved adult dog can just cast a look or do something with their ears or their tail and their body language or their heckles on their back. They don't ever need to attack them or hurt them or bite them, but they can do tiny, minute little bits of communication that lets the dog know that that is not acceptable behavior. And you'll also watch that the puppy will instantly recognize that and will instantly stop that nipping or biting behavior. And there has been no altercation between the two. Now, everything that we're trying to do is to try and imitate that relationship 
relationship with our dogs. We want all of our dogs, regardless of their age, to have that ability to see us as their leader and to respect us. And everything we need to do is be able to be able to communicate with the puppy in the same way that a dog can. Now we will never, no human on the planet will ever have as good communication with a dog as a well-rounded, well-behaved, well-mannered adult dog. And that's the reason that I use role model dogs in my practice so often, because they can get to the root of a problem far quicker than any dog trainer or behaviorist can on the planet. So what is it that we actually need to do to stop this? What is, whilst they're a puppy, a very annoying behavior, but if you don't nip it in the bud early, will become a very problem behavior as the dog gets older. Well, it's a two-stage fix. The first fix is that you absolutely must, like I mentioned, restructure your relationship with your dog. And either, if you don't know how, you need to educate yourself on becoming a calm and consistent leader that can then have that relationship with your dog that the dog understands to look to you for direction and you have the ability to communicate the things that you do like and the things that you don't like without having to resort to any force or any kind of physically punitive measures that might hurt or upset the relationship between you and your dog. Now the way that I do that with all the behavior cases that I work with is to get all of the owners to put their dogs through the boot camp protocol. It's my one month boot camp protocol that I use for like I say the vast majority of issues can usually be solved and nipped in the bud just by implementing this course. What that course is, which is linked in the description box by the way, or you can find it on fenreardogtraining.com but it's a one month protocol that not only teaches your dog how to be a perfect canine companion, but probably more importantly teaches you how to be a perfect, calm, confident and relaxed leader for your dog so that you can restructure that relationship. Because the problem is you can't start to utilize any corrective or retrain your dog out of nipping or biting unless they respect that they need to do as you tell them to. Now take this for an example. One of the most common issues with puppy biting is that people are bit by their puppies, they're nipped by the puppies. It starts to get to a point where it hurts. They go through the ridiculous methods of rolling around and yelping on the floor that m never work, never work. Then they become round to the idea of a more balanced approach where corrections are used. Most probably just verbal stern corrections and utilizing negative reinforcement where you remove uh, negative punishment sorry where you remove your attention away from the dog when they do display those behaviors but what really commonly happens here is that your dog will get more excited and they'll try and nip further and you'll get they'll get even further wound up and more energetic and that is a telltale sign that your dog does not respect you as their leader and does see you as a litter mate and that they are a more controlling dominant member of the litter and if they want to play and chew and nip and bite they can do so and no matter what you try to do to stop them it doesn't matter it just makes them do it more so that is a telltale sign that you need to restructure your relationship with your dog because if your dog does see you as the calm consistent leader and you have good communication where you know how to tell them the things that you do like and how to tell them the things that you don't like when you tell them to stop doing something if they respect you as their calm consistent leader they will instantly stop the way a well-rounded adult dog can get a puppy to instantly stop. And if you don't believe that, just type in on YouTube, um, mother dog controls puppies. And there's hundreds of videos. I love watching them. They're amazing. Where puppies will be being really obnoxious and annoying and overly energetic. And the mum will make one kind of verbal correction and there'll be 10 puppies will just drop and stop instantly. It's beautiful, the dog, the mother dog hasn't attacked them, she hasn't hurt them, but she's simply just in our way gone, oi, cut it out, and they've all gone, oh, sorry. And that's what we want to be able to do with our dogs. It doesn't mean that we hurt them or physically abuse them in any way using these balanced methods. It simply means that the dog respects us, respects our authority as their leader. And if we ask them to do something, they do it. And if we ask them to not do something, they stop doing it. So that's why the most important fix is to get that relationship right first. I can teach you different methods of stopping your dog, but ultimately if they don't have that respect, those methods won't work. Now that is the harder part
part of the puzzle and it does involve hard work and dedication but if you get that bit right everything else is easy and that's the bit that most dog trainers will forget they'll just teach you silly little tricks or uh, obedience routines or methods to stop your dog from nipping but it doesn't really it just kind of redirects the bad behavior into another bad behavior and then you have to change that and you redirect that into another bad behavior what we need to do is just cut the nonsense restructure the relationship and then be able to move forward with some of the tips and tricks that I'm now going to give you so once you've restructured your relationship and you've got the ideal relationship of your dog being calm and well-mannered and are happy to look for you for direction you then simply need to utilize my method and I simply call it correct redirect reinforce it's just a little three-stage method that you use absolutely every single time that the dog displays any negative chewing or biting or nipping behaviors. Now, like I say, if when you try to implement this, especially the correction, I'm gonna discuss how to do in a minute, but if you find that that ramps the dog up more, you need to really go back to the drawing board again. Like I say, maybe utilize my bootcamp course. Again, the link is in the description box below. Go through that, restructure your relationship and try again. And obviously, as you're going through the bootcamp course, you don't have to wait until you're finished. As part of the bootcamp course, you will be starting to do these kind of methods and drills anyway and it will stop those behaviors as you go through the course and you'll find that most people the vast majority actually everybody that goes through the course and follows it properly by the time you come out a lot of those annoying obnoxious behaviors kind of just fall from the wayside anyway which is why I utilize it for everything because it's actually very 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 rare that your dog requires any form of genuine bespoke behavioral intervention or behavior modification program what they actually need is just better structure and better guidance so i always put people through the boot camp and if they come out and they definitely have 100 percent followed it properly and they're still then displaying proper bad behavior then we can look at implementing severe modification programs but it's very very rarely actually required you just need to simply restructure your relationship so like i say focus on that first i know I keep going on about it but it's because it's so so important and I can't stress it enough but once you've got that and as part of your restructuring you simply correct redirect reinforce so how does that look so you're playing with your dog they're getting a little bit energetic which I never recommend by the way as part of my boot camp I kind of teach you how to reinforce calm relaxed behavior and actually to really discourage energetic excited behavior because with puppies puppies do mouth and bite it's how they discover the world and they do teeth and they want to chew on things because it relieves the teething that's why people feel sorry for them and let them get away with it but that's not what we do we need to teach them to chew on the right things and the appropriate things so how does that work like i say we correct redirect reinforce so we start with the correction we always part again part of the boot camp course we we condition our dog to understand that we have a verbal correction if you do that it means if you do that properly it means that you'll never you need to use physical correction so the verbal correction that i recommend is always ah, ah, ah. now again in the boot camp i teach you how to condition that but what you need to do is the dog starts nipping we go with a ah, ah, ah. very firm very stern no messing chest up as a good leader would do as a as an adult dog would do the way that they would use a bark or a growl we're using a verbal correction ah, 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 and the dog needs to learn straight away that oh that means that whatever i'm doing i need to stop and again if that kicks your dog up you've got a problem hopefully usually that should be enough to get them to stop it immediately so what we're doing in terms of operant conditioning the verbal correction the ah, 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 is positive punishment positive simply means to add it doesn't mean good it means to add and the punishment means to get them to stop doing a behavior that we find undesirable so we use the positive punishment ah, ah, ah. then we use the negative punishment that doesn't mean bad punishment negative means to remove so what we do is we completely remove our attention the praise goes the excitement goes the petting goes the love goes everything goes but we're not yelping or rolling around on the floor or acting weak we're a strong calm we don't get angry calm consistent leader again a leader wouldn't flop around on the floor like an idiot squealing and yelping but we correct them ah, ah, ah. again we come away we remove our behavior completely we remove our attention sorry and our praise and again if you go through my boot camp course what you'll naturally find there is that the dog will then go into a sit and stay which is excellent if they don't do that don't worry about it at this stage 
but then what we do, so we've corrected them and we've used positive punishment and negative punishment. So we've kind of two-way used the four areas of operant conditioning. As balanced dog trainers, we, we dip into all four areas of operant conditioning to help our dogs understand what we want from them. So we've used positive punishment, we've used negative punishment. Then we all, and this is where you have to have lots of different chew toys on hand, from bones to kongs to ropes to tugs, to whatever they like, just keep them on hand. We then go and get that chew toy. We give them the chew toy. Again, we give it to them as their leader. We don't leave them on the floor. This is in a raised position or a basket. We give them access to the chew toy. Helps kind of reinforce that leadership uh, mentality. And when they then start chewing on the appropriate thing, so we've redirected them by giving them something different. We then praise and reinforce them chewing on the right thing. And you do that over and over and over again. And if, like I say, you've got that structure you're right and the dog knows to look for you for direction it should only take a few times and the dog will very quickly learn oh i don't chew on fingers or arms or hands or any part of the human body what i do chew on is these things and if i chew on these things i get positive reinforcement i get praise so again we've dipped into positive punishment negative punishment positive reinforcement to help adapt our dog's behavior to teach them what it is that we don't want which is stop chewing or biting me and what i do want is for you to chew on this thing very simple it's very straightforward it's a very simple concept but it gets washed out and diluted with the amount of nonsense that's out there on the internet it's very straightforward at no point have i hurt the dog at no point have we hit them at no point have we physically corrected them we've verbally corrected them we've corrected them by removing our attention and our praise then we've redirected them onto the thing that they should be chewing and then we praise and reinforce that it's, it's that simple it really is that simple if that doesn't work like I say and that just makes them chew or nip harder or ramps the energy levels up then unfortunately I need to tell you that you're it's a big problem because that as they get older and they go into adolescence and adulthood that is just the symptom the nipping and the excitement ramping up is a symptom of a much bigger problem and you're going to find that more symptoms will come that will get bigger and bigger as they get older so I can't stress enough that you need to nip this in the bud now and you need to restructure your relationship and the best way to do that is to put them through my one month boot camp protocol which like I say you can find down in the description below I hope you found that useful I hope it was helpful I love doing videos like this so keep leaving your questions down in the comment section below all the different things that you're struggling on and i'll happily answer them in this format i've got lots of one-to-one -one consultations lined up where I'm going to go out and I'm going to film me actually doing some of these things with some negative behavior so you'll get to see it in first hand but I'm a huge advocate for not just showing you how to do something and hoping that you can recreate it but about teaching you the theory because if you can understand the theory and you understand the process of how to be a calm consistent leader that communicates with a dog then you don't need me and you don't need these videos because you'll be able to work it out for yourself that's far more important it's far more useful um, it's just better for the dog and ultimately everything we do is about being better for the dog so that they don't end up in shelters they don't end up euthanized you're an excellent leader thank you so much for watching this video if you did like it click like subscribe if you're new here and i'll see you on the next episode of will and mabel